Welcome to Classifying Matter. In the last video, we talked about matter in a very, very broad sense. We said matter is anything that has a mass and a volume. Now that's almost too broad for our purposes in chemistry. We want to narrow that down a little bit when we talk about matter. So one of the first things we're going to ask ourselves today is how can we narrow that down a little bit? And what we're going to see is that we can categorize or classify matter based on its properties. So let's take a look at how we can organize uh, what we know about matter and how we can classify it. So let's start with matter. And what we're going to see is we can split matter into two categories. And let's look at these one at a time. The first category that we can put matter into is that of a pure substance. Okay, so we put down pure substance. Uh, and we use the term substance a lot in the last video, and it's going to be helpful for us to get a more sort of formal definition of substance uh, for the purpose of this lesson. So let's set that up. A substance is any matter that has a fixed composition and is uniform. So that's have both those two things, a fixed composition and is uniform. So let's look at some examples. Uh, oxygen gas is, an, is a pure substance. Water is a pure substance. Salt is an example of a pure substance. Uh, carbon dioxide, CO2, is an example of a pure substance. So we just said that substances need to have a fixed composition and uniformity. So let's look at the first part of that, the fixed composition. Uh, we can look at the carbon dioxide here as our example. Carbon dioxide as a pure substance is always going to have the same composition. Okay? All carbon dioxide everywhere is made up of one carbon and two oxygens put together. Okay? So that's a pure substance. It has the same composition everywhere. Uh, uniformity is kind of a similar idea. Uh, uniformity has to do with consistency. And it basically means the same throughout. This idea of uniformity is going to be very important for this lesson. And let's take a look at it for, for the water. If we have a sample of water, and say our sample is a cup of water, the water at the top of the cup is not going to be any different than the water at the bottom of the cup. Okay, it's uniform all the way through. So that's, that's what a pure substance is. And we're going to spend a lot of time in the next video really exploring substances even more. Um, but for the remainder of this video, we're actually be interested in the second category. If the matter we're trying to classify is not a substance, then it has to be, there's only one option, it has to be a mixture of substances, actually a mixture of substances, although we just refer to it as a mixture. A mixture of substances. Okay. We refer to it as a mixture. And there's a couple uh, common examples of this. Uh, air is a common example of a mixture. It's a mixture of gases. Air has uh, nitrogen gas in it. It has uh, argon. It has oxygen gas. It has some carbon dioxide in it. Uh, so it's a mix of all of these gases. Uh, another common example is soda. Uh, or cola, depending on where you're from. But soda is a liquid mixture of several things, um, primarily water and sugar. Okay? Each of these are substances on their own. Uh, there's also some flavoring substances that are added. And there's uh, carbon dioxide that's dissolved in there to give it the, the fizz, the, the bubbles. Um, so soda is another mixture of several substances together. The sort of key idea behind a mixture is that it's a physical blending of the components. Okay? It's a physical combination of these components. When you put these things together in a mixture, for example the soda, you put the water, the sugar, the flavoring components, and the carbon dioxide together, there are no new substances formed. Okay? It's just a physical combination of all those things. We mix them together. As we move forward into this lesson, we're going to talk about uh, how we can recognize some types of mixtures and how we can separate mixtures back into their uh, component substances. So, so far we know that matter is either going to be a substance or a mixture of substances. Uh, but we're going to focus now on the mixtures and what types of mixtures there are. And we can basically break this down into two further categories. Um, the first category we have is a homogeneous 
mixture. And the other category, the other possibility, is that we have a heterogeneous mixture. And uh, these prefixes and uh, root words may be familiar to you from biology. Uh, if not, let's talk about those really quickly. Um, the sort of core of both words here, this genius part, okay, that comes from <clears throat> that comes from a word genos, that means the kind or type, okay. And homo and hetero refer to same for homo and different for hetero. So homogeneous uh, sort of means same kind. And heterogeneous means different kinds. So when we talk about a homogeneous mixture, we're talking about a mixture that is uniform. Here's that idea of uniformity again. A homogeneous mixture is uniform. It's the same throughout. So an example of this is when you combine salt and water in a mixture and you get salt water. Okay, salt water is uniform all the way through. It's a mixture because there's two different substances in it, salt and water, but it has this uniformity. It's evenly distributed. So it's a homogeneous mixture. This is sometimes called a solution. Okay, so we can keep that terminology in mind. Uh, a heterogeneous mixture. Let's look over here. A heterogeneous mixture, different kinds, this is one that is not uniform. So it has visibly different components in it. Okay, you can actually, just by looking at it in a heterogeneous mixture, you can see some of the different components. You can tell that it's not the same everywhere. Um, an example of this, if we put oil and water together, there's going to be a layer of oil and a layer of water. So they're, they're mixed, okay, but they're not, they're, you're going to see that they're not evenly mixed all the way through. Sometimes this is referred to as having more than one phase. Okay? So these are our two types of mixtures, heterogeneous mixtures and homogeneous mixtures. Really only two options here, and the question that helps you identify which is which is if you can ask yourself, is this mixture uniform? If it is uniform, it's homogeneous. If it is not uniform, it's heterogeneous. So now we can look at some common separation techniques. We're going to look at how we can separate a mixture into its component substances. And there are a lot of separation techniques. I'm just going to mention a few right now. There is a common theme, though. There is a common theme of separation techniques, and that is to separate a mixture you're basically using the physical properties of the substances to separate them. Okay, So we're going to make use of physical properties uh, in all cases. And we'll sort of talk about what those are as we go through them. The first technique that we're going to see is filtration. And filtration is a very common separation technique. Uh, filtration uses the property of size to separate out components of a mixture. One of the most common places we see filtration is actually when you're making coffee. Uh, you use filter paper when you make coffee uh, to separate the ground from the coffee. So you filter through the paper, the paper catches all the ground so it doesn't get into your drink, and uh, that is a filtration uh, of the coffee. The second technique is distillation and evaporation. I've combined these two into one, uh, even though they are separate techniques. Distillation and evaporation, as far as I'm concerned, are two sides of the same coin. So we'll talk a little bit about how they're different and how they're the same. Um, so for this, we can use an example. Okay, let's say we have a mixture salt water. And we want to separate the salt from the water. But well, one of the things we can do is we can let the water evaporate off. So we have you know, a dish here, and say it was filled with water in it. Over time, we can, we can even add some heat to this. We can add some heat. And what will happen is, as you can expect, the water will boil off, it'll evaporate off. And uh, what we're going to be left with in the end, once all the water is gone, all the water is gone, we're going to have some salt crystals on the bottom. Because the salt's left behind, the salt's not going to evaporate off. So this is evaporation as a technique. 
because what we're collecting is the salt. Okay? It's evaporation because we don't care about what happened to the liquid. We just care about isolating this stuff that's left behind, whatever impurity was left behind, in this case, the salt. Distillation, on the other hand, we have the same scenario. So we have, let's put our water back in here, and it is evaporating off. In distillation, though, we actually collect, we grab all that vapor coming out of there with something called a distillation apparatus. And we'll see one of those in class. Um, but we're going we're gonna to collect all that vapor and then recondense the vapor back into a liquid. And so in this case, we're going to be able to get what's called the distillate. And this is a great way of purifying liquids uh, because you can boil off a liquid. In this case, in my example, it was water. We can boil off the water, collect the steam, recondense it to a liquid by cooling it down, and then we have pure water. This is our distillate, distilled water in this example. And it's very pure because uh, all the impurities are left behind. So this technique, these techniques of distillation and evaporation um, are typically helpful for separating liquids. Okay, we're looking to separate liquids from impurities or things that were dissolved. Okay, both these techniques are sort of centered around this idea. In a distillation, we're interested in saving the liquid. That becomes our distillate. In evaporation, we're more interested in collecting those impurities or whatever was dissolved. The third separation technique we're going to talk about is decantation or decanting. And this one is really simple. Uh, if you basically have a container, uh, we have some water here, and let's say we throw some objects into it. You're going to notice that they sink to the bottom, and we can very easily just pour off the water uh, to separate the water from the stuff we just threw in. So that's decanting. It's basically pouring off, pouring off. Um, a layer of liquid. Okay. Very simple but effective uh, separation technique.